When the Chiefs and Titans played back in November, Patrick Mahomes threw for season high 446, three touchdowns. Pretty good numbers, but when you really take a closer look, Chris, should have been even better. Could have had a whole lot more yards. I mean, yes, this was his first game back after the, you know, kneecap dislocation, the whole issue he had down there. Missed some throws, certainly. I think this is a play we can learn from. One, to go, okay, Patrick Mahomes, I expect him to hit this on AFC Championship Sunday. Two, we're going to hit on some of the Titans and what they're doing here and some of the things they do wrong in this picture specifically. Now, the, the Chiefs, over 530 yards offense. I mean, they never really got stopped the whole day, but they left some opportunities and some points on the board. Here, the big thing is, and when you're playing Patrick Mahomes, the Kansas City Chiefs, they're great up front. I mean, there's just no denying that. So that's the first thing. These guys are unbelievable pass protectors. And then, as we know, these guys got tremendous speed. And on this play specifically, all right, that's, you're going to have protection from these guys. You're going to have Kelsey come down, run something like this right in here. And really, they're going to play two verticals going down the field and basically two on one these safeties. Now, the thing that we got to learn from here a little bit is the Tennessee Titans are trying to disguise their coverage here. They want to play Tampa, too. You got to be careful how long you disguise your coverages against the Kansas City Chiefs. You'll disguise them so much that they're going to run by you and you're never going to get back into coverage. So ultimately here, what they want to do is this guy to be back here. This guy's got this half. This middle linebacker runs down the middle. Here's in the corner. Here's here. And then these guys are really just going to be playing the eyes of the quarterback. But that's your Tampa too. The two deep safeties, guy down the middle. All right. So let's see how the play unfolds. Let's go to the next picture, Pete. You go to the next, you go to the next picture first off and okay there's two things that jump out to me one all right this guy and you know what we should go back let me go back to picture one to point something out real quick because i messed that up and i want to show it anyways <laughs> so we're going to do this in real time this guy right here when you're playing over tyree kill you got to get your hands on him at some point. You just can't let Tyree Kill go. And that's a safety, not a linebacker. Yeah, right? exactly. It's a nickel corner here. I think that's Logan Ryan to be specific. But you got to do something, right? I'm not, if you're Tyree Kill and you're coming at me, you can't just let him just go. Go zoom. Go ahead. Go get up on my safety. We won't touch you. <laughs> yeah, good luck safety. Right? You have no chance. Yeah. So you got to do something to where if you try to come by me, at least you ride him out a little bit. Do something like that to where now it gives the safety throws off the timing of the rhythm of the quarterback. Right. He looks to go wait he should be over here but now he's been pushed and rubbed out over here this is exactly gives gives the play no chance for the Titans. no defense. no chance he's got to get his hands on it or they're going to get burned and toasted because i would think the kansas city chiefs feel really good about what they did last week and they're going to kind of have a hot hand this week so now let's get back to picture number two pete you know the first thing i noticed though is this right here this is the predicament right they yeah. are unbelievable pass protectors all right they the tennessee titans are not exactly a great group of pass rushers. Now they can find creative ways to blitz and do things like that, but just as a front four, they're not one that's gonna, I think, instill fear into the Kansas City Chiefs and, and their offensive line. This is a really good pass protecting offensive line, and he has great feel in the pocket, right. as we know. But look how the play unfolds, okay? So there's a number of issues. You know, one, this guy who we talked about, like getting your hands on it, he got no hands, and look where he is. Look, I mean, this safety's back here, and he's going, whoa. Oh, I got Sammy Watkins and Tyree Kill, two on one fast break. Like, what the hell do I do? This guy, forget about it. He's done. Plus, he's looking at Travis Kelsey. All right, there's that issue. And then the other thing I want to say, and I guarantee Tennessee will correct this. When you play Tampa 2, and I have great experience against Tampa 2 because I was in Tampa, in Tampa. versus Tampa 2 every day. <laughs> This linebacker, as you see him here, he's facing this way to the tight end. He can't do that. He's got to know where his biggest threat is. His biggest threat is the guy that runs 4-1 over here. He needs to be turned this way, worried about him, more than worried about the tight end down the middle of the maybe field. He was, maybe he was told to, to watch Kelsey first. Yeah, m maybe he was. You're right. He could. I, I'm, I'm not saying that's wrong. You know, and I think there's certain downs and distances. Maybe you do want to watch Kelsey. But this is first down, and I would say when they get in this type of situation and, and Hill, Tyreek Hill, is in the slot, I would say abort mission and pay attention to him because they're going to try to find some way to get him to go deep. So as you see here, they're in a great position of power, great protection, mm -hmm. basically going to have two on one down the field. And let's go to the next slide to see what happens. 
And this is the shocking part. And this happened a number of times during the game. Missed him. Missed him. I mean, hey, there he is. All right? And there's the ball. And there's the ball. You yeah. see it. It's in the picture there, too. Now, I mean, pay attention to this, too. Oh. I mean, wide open. This was really probably the easier throw. He could have just looked at Tyree Kill and then probably just said, you know what, I'm just going to throw a line drive and just make Sammy Watkins stop, and he's going to walk in for a touchdown regardless. But there was opportunities like this in the game for the Kansas City offense, like I said, that was never stopped all day long. Two right. plays later, he's got a guy wide open down the middle of the field. Sammy Watkins is running an in-cut, and it's like kind of the same thing. It's like Tyree Kill went deep. Sammy Watkins is going this way. Defenders ran into each other. Mah Holmes missed the throw. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's going to go for a 40, 50 yard gain. Well, it ends up, they end up punting the ball here. You know what happens? They punt the ball. The next play, the Tennessee Titans throw a bomb down the middle of the field. Right. He gets touched at like the 15. A few plays later, they score. And instead of maybe being up 17, nothing, now it's 10 to seven. And Kansas City gets the ball, and Damian William fumbles, and they pick it up and run it for a touchdown. And all of a sudden, the game that Kansas City is dominating the football game in total control, they look up and go, whoa, we're down 14 to 10. How did that happen? Well, when you don't take advantage of opportunities or stomp a guy out when you got the chance to, right. you let a team hang around, you know, I know, that that can be very dangerous for any football team. The Chiefs' offense against any defense, yes. uh, look at what they did all season when Mahomes was in there. Look at what they did the last three quarters last weekend against Houston. Exactly. I think the knee-jerk reaction is to say they have a big-time advantage here. Right. Let's look at it glass half full from Tennessee's point yeah. of view. They frustrated Tom Brady from start to finish right. a couple of weeks ago. Right. They just gave Lamar Jackson his worst game of the season. Yeah. So what can they learn from this? And uh, what's a side of, of their part of this angle sure. that would, would lead you to believe they've got a great chance for success. Yeah, well, I mean, one, we, we talked about some of the mistakes they made. Like, they can't do that. You can never let slot receivers just have free access and fly up on your safeties. The safeties will have no chance against Watkins, Tyree Kill. I think they got to change their plan up in general anyways. Like, in certain sets, just like this one, if we go back to the first picture, Pete, you know, hey, it's Tampa 2. You know, Kansas City is going to probably get in this set during the game going, hey, let's see if we get Tampa 2 again. And we'll find some plays this week to screw it over once again. If I'm DMPs and Vrabel, I just go, eh, I don't trust Andy Reid, championship weekend, this talent. Like, I'm coming in with a different game plan for this one, whatever that may be. Whether you want to play some sort of three deep zone, okay, and then, you know, this guy's playing back and this play's playing back and he's playing the middle of the field and he goes under and he goes here and here and he plays the deep middle, whatever it may be. You say would, whatever it may be, what would you have it be? Uh, I would have it be, I would not dabble in man very often. So that would be the one thing I would be careful of. To me, it would be zone, zone coverages where you're dropping guys into areas where you think they might attack in certain formations and personnel sets. And yes, whether that's, you know, a cover three or some sort of, you know, what I would call a blitz change. Let's just say, you know, hey, yeah, you know, uh, this guy blitzes, this guy's coming, this guy's coming, all right? And then this guy loops around and this guy drops back. Like some exotic coverages like that to have people dropping where maybe Patrick Mahomes not expecting. It can stress out, you know, your pass protection, yet you're not compromised and you still have seven guys in the back back end to cover all these freaky weapons that the Kansas City Chiefs have. It's going to be a tall mm -hmm. task. Well, I mean, course, a tough yeah. task. We know because they got it all right now. They have a short passing game that they developed during the year. They have a good screen game. And I think last week is only going to like give them more confidence right. about what they can do in the deep passing game, too. And as you pointed out, they have a real advantage up front. So why not try to win the game back here? Because you're likely not going to win it right there against that offensive I, line. I, anyway. I think so. Right. Well, one of the things that you showed and we talked about a yeah. moment ago brings up a question. Right. Pete, can you bring back the second picture? So in this sequence, the next one, there we go. Yep. So you said that this was a mistake for this guy right yeah, here to right. be eyeing Kelsey instead of worrying about Hill. Yeah. So Dean Pease, defensive coordinator, Monday in his meeting, right. probably said something similar to, hey, this guy's going to make a bunch of ridiculous throws. Yeah. We can't do anything about that. Right. But we're not going to let blank beat us, i.e., are they most worried about Kelsey or does the defensive plan start? <sighs> With Hill. It, it's the, the, this is where you have to play down in distances a little bit, I do think. You know, um, they're both extremely dangerous. I would say mostly on third downs, got to have it type plays. And really, I haven't seen Tennessee do this stuff other than New England in the wild card game a whole lot where they doubled Julian Edelman some and did right. some of that. They're certainly capable. But I think if you get in third and four or a big third down, I would, I would err on doubling 
Kelsey right there. Mm -hmm. I would. I think that's the guy that Mahomes more often than not went in trouble. He's not sure where to go. He trusts Kelsey more than anybody else. Kelsey has a great ability to even when he's covered and Mahomes goes, oh, he's covered to uncover. Right. And you go, whoa, I mean, that was the perfect defense. How did they make that happen? Well, they made it happen because they're great and they both have great feel. So that would be the guy I would be more worried about in most situations. I think you maybe worry about this guy on some occasional Tyree kill. Okay, like this play right here, it's first down and it's a shot play situation. You know, whether you want to play man or three deep, that's fine. But whoever that free safety is in the middle of the field, like I think you gotta, you gotta like have an, uh, an awareness, sorry, with all my extra circles there, mm. of like where Tyree Kill is. So no matter where the safety lines up, I think he's always got to be aware of Hill and his, and his deep speed and what they can do in the deep passing game. We normally start our look at a certain matchup coming up for the games here this weekend with a shot of a play. We're starting with a shot of Derrick Henry for very good reason. 96 carries in the last three games alone. Where are those carries going? Well, it's all about the zone play, inside, outside zone, and specifically here, outside zone. I mean, are you kidding me? These numbers are insane, all right? Inside zone, and just for all those out there, we go like, what is inside zone, what is outside zone? Outside zone is basically linemen taking an area and they're trying to, what, it, what we would call reach block, right? So come on, me and you are gonna explain this, let's do it. Like, if I'm, cool, let's Mike. just say, if you say you're the three technique defensive tackle, okay. we're gonna run this way, right? Stay on this edge there, you're good. Standing up. And yeah. I'm gonna go like this, because I wanna get you to here, to so yeah. where I can block you and cut you off, right. to now where we have sealed the outside there and Derrick Henry can run. Now, if I can't and let's say I start going this way and you're beating me okay, then I'm just going to keep pushing you this way and I got faith Derrick Henry is going to find the cutback lane right. and then make a big play off of that. Right. So that's what outside zone does. Inside zone is a very similar concept except it's just the opposite. So when it goes like this, I just keep pushing you that way and now it kind of comes to become a mash up the middle for inside zone. So outside zone can come become inside zone in a lot of ways. But either way the Tennessee Titans are masters at it okay and then this guy is like a modern day Jim Brown right now and just looks like a man amongst boys and he's kicking butt and I mean you couldn't pay me and Paul enough money to tackle <laughs> right. this guy all right yeah so yeah go ahead what do you want to say so I mean that, that's a good explanation right. of where these runs are going and what outside run means because people throw that term around a lot but right as for this version of the Titans where yes if Derek doesn't carry the ball 30 times this weekend it'll be a surprise when you look at the numbers it really started in November against Kansas City. It definitely did. This was the jump start. I mean, this is actually, it's very funny. I mean, we're going to talk about, this was the start of Tennessee getting their run game going, and as we'll hit at the end of this, I'll show you, this is the start of Kansas City starting to improve their run right. defense after this football game. But let's go. Let's go to picture number one. This is the big play, right? What was it, Pete? A 65-yard touchdown, a 68-yard touchdown, and they're going to be running basically outside zone here, all right? And so you're going to just have basically this is boom and boom boom and boom and boom and boom all right and then the fullback's going to come right in between here sorry all right and make the block there this is like outside zone boss what we call back on support because he's going to be trying to look up for the safety either way but here's my first problem with this play and something where Kansas City like what is it you're seeing it probably it looks already like it's so lopsided well, this way exactly and what you can't even see here to this point and you just got to trust me is like Honey Badger is out here. He's over here as the other safety. Right. So now you're, you're exactly right. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven guys to this side of the ball. And six of them were the big numbers. We're stopping the run is what they do first. Exactly. So now, as this play goes, and I don't want to go to the picture yet, but you just got to trust me here, okay? Now, with this play, all right, at the snap, really, Reggie Ragland's going to end up about right here at the snap. And as the ball gets snapped, our man Juan Thornhill, who's not playing, but somebody will be playing his p position, probably Sorensen, he is going back to the middle third because they're playing a cover three type defense. But my big issue here is to what you're saying and with a running back who's looking to go this way and then, whoa, if these guys all overplay going this way, he's very great 
at seeing the, the right cut, the right hole all the time. He's going to cut it back if he sees this type of look. All right. And that was the issue with this play and really an issue for the Kansas City Chiefs all, all, all game this game. Not necessarily that they got beat up up front, but some of their alignments, they schematically can't realistically defend the run they're trying to stop. So let's go to the second picture. The second picture, as you see, look, they've mashed it down. Here's our, our weak side linebacker that we talked about, right? Reggie Raglan. He's right here. He's right here. He's in deep crap right now because, look, here's Taylor Lewan behind him blocking nobody, all right? And Derrick Henry, I can promise you, is already looking at this cutback lane, and he's just setting it up. He's just kind of going in there like, oh, don't mind me. I'm just going this way. Boom. And he's going to cut back and find that hole. Right. And, to, and to the point that you made and that we noticed, I mean, are you kidding me? It's one. It's two. It's three. It's four. It's five at six and like I said honey badger is over here outside the screen too that's seven guys out here you don't even need seven blockers to block seven guys that way now the other thing they did in this game too and we don't know if big Chris Jones is playing right Chris Jones is a defensive tackle mm -hmm. but they decided to get big for this game so they put him a defensive end well this is one you can't have it all all the time right and this guy's awesome and I think he's better at this position now than he was then because they still do this where they put him a defensive end but as you see he's part of the problem as well he's part of the problem because look at the size of this cutback lane and this is not exactly you know Frank Clark or Von Miller or somebody who's just going to go this is a 315 pound man so for his ability to close this gap and make a tackle once Derrick Henry comes through it I don't like his chances especially in that much space even if he did close the gap I mean who's out here exactly right Nobody. he makes him miss he might go somewhere else too exactly right. right so the alignment's wrong you know this is a cer certain play here too where Ryan Tannehill he's worried about the bootleg he's worried about Tannehill so they're they're basically betting that Chris Jones is going to sit back here and wait for the bootleg well that becomes an issue and then as Derrick Henry sees the hole let's go to the next picture and it's big trouble little China for the for the Kansas City Chiefs now Juan Thornhill who we saw flying back had to put on the brakes because he was going to play the middle of the field safety and now he's coming up to try to make a tackle and you see here's Chris Jones you know at 315 pounds he was not able to close that gap quick enough and Juan Thornhill is in the unenviable position of going like, hey, no big deal. Can you just tackle like one of the freakiest guys in all the NFL one-on-one -on -one with like a two-way go? Yeah, okay, good luck there, Slugger. Mm -hmm. So he misses that tackle, of course. There's poor Juan right there on the floor. Oh, and it's like, it's night-night. I mean, once you get this guy in the open, you know, there's not a lot of guys on many teams here that are going to run him down. I mean, this is Char you know, Char Char uh, Ward, 35. <laughs> 35 and then yes. there's Honey Badger chasing him from behind. And then that's, you know, strike up the band, Derrick Henry scoring a touchdown. So that was a major issue for them. Not only like, you know, missed assignments, missed tackles, but the alignment was not realistic. And I want to go to another play that's very similar to this a little later in the game, okay. just to show it one more time, because it happened over and over. Now, some of the linebackers just made bad mistakes, filled wrong holes in oh, certain instances. Oh. Right. There you go. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. It's, it's, it's even more vivid from... From this what Tannehill way. is seeing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, so right off the bat, how do you stop a weak side run with that side, size of a hole? If he has a Superman play? Right. Exactly right. You're yeah. hoping, like, what, what? Yeah, Chris Jones makes some Superman play and crosses yeah. his face. Or maybe you're hoping Honey Badger comes down and creates havoc and makes a tackle. I don't know. But at the very least, again, it's a similar scheme. Uh, this is just weak side kind of inside zone where it's going to be where they're going to kind of boom like this. He's going to go up here and he's going to seal off this linebacker who's going to try to pursue suit because he's got no chance now mm -hmm. to get to weak side he blocks out this way honey badger comes down over here on the outside so you basically have two guys on the outside gap that's not right and you have nobody accounting for this gap right here and this is to me where they have to be wrong you know this is where I look at like our man Wilson I, I don't know if they were coaching him to do that this week uh, or if he was messing up I don't know the answers to that but either way this is something I think that's going to jump out to them on 
on the film study of this this week 10 matchup to go wait our alignments were stupid and you know our linebackers overplayed some of these plays I mean he's a master Henry at reading the flow of the second level if he sees you going too aggressive one way he is going to make a cutback or whatever it may be and then if the hole just pops open like it does in this one he just hits the gas and goes yeah and let's go to the second picture and see what we got here but there we go look so so now you have the right guard tried to get up on uh, oh let me switch my my uh, pen there the right guard tried to get up on on 50 uh, 54 Wilson here you could see Saffold who kind of banged the banged the nose tackle and then went up here He's got no one to block right now because Honey Badger's outside. He's outside. But as the play goes, he's going to turn around and look back for work, and he's going to seal 54 off to make sure uh, that this block gets, gets handled. Right. So go to the, go to, let's go to the next picture. There's the next picture. 54 has been decked by Roger Saffold. That's why he's on the ground. And now you got Derrick Henry upfield with a secondary guy tackling him, and he's down to the one-yard line. And this first yeah. and goal Titans, and, like, you're not going to stop Derrick Henry from the one-yard line. You're right. just not. Pete, uh, go back to the second play of that sequence, if you can, where he was pointing out Roger Saffold before he came back and, yeah. and double-teamed. The, the Chiefs' alignment was so poor, they only needed 10 guys. I mean, exactly. That was nice that he peeled back. I mean, they could have won that play without one of their linemen playing. No doubt. You're right. If Saffold doesn't come back and crack this guy, he's, looking he's probably for something still going to get through with like right. an arm tackle. Either way, he knocks him on the ground. But your point is exactly because they've wasted a guy right. in the same gap. These two guys are in the same gap defending what? And they can't make those mistakes this time around. So the numbers, uh, whether it's run defense or points or wins, Spagnuolo's defense is a whole lot better now a whole than it lot was then. As it relates to the mistakes they made against the Titans, right. how is it better? Yeah, well, first off, it's fixable. Second of all, the, second of the, the, the Chiefs' defensive line is playing better for one, two. I mean, whether it's 99, Kalen Saunders, uh, Mike Pennell, uh, you know, Passignon, Nandi, 91, they have all really improved their play, let alone the linebackers. And I think that Spagnuolo's found the formula and defenses, and everybody he's comfortable in the system you know really from this point on to where I think they kind of hunkered in and said okay this is what we want to be as a defense disguises right. let's not move around up front a whole lot too much just play our gaps we got some talent but in the back end we'll try to confuse you with some coverage and you'll never know what we are there and here's the big results yeah, the numbers are great right um, however a cynic, I'll yes. play the cynic at this sure. time, would say, okay, these look good. They played the Chargers a couple times. Yep. They played the Raiders. I get you. They played the Broncos. They haven't played against a team that is committed to the run as Tennessee. No. There's not a comp in the last two months to what the Titans are going to do. So no. to that you say. Well, to that I say you're right. There is no comp. I mean, I would say the Raiders were one of the better running teams in football. Other than one run against Josh Jacobs, they were phenomenal in that game. Okay, mm -hmm. so again, and that's a big, powerful, hulking offensive line. But this is a different animal to your point. There's no doubt about that. I mean, this is, hey, we talked about Kansas City's offense. For them to win, they need their greatest assets, assets to play, right, yeah. and play well. They're paying a lot of money to Watkins. They're paying a lot of money to Kelsey. They drafted Mahomes in the top, you know, 15 of the draft. They're paying Tyreek Hill a lot of money. If they don't play well, your money doesn't play well, you don't win games. Right. Well, the Tennessee Titans, their assets are in their run game. Right. Got a top 10 left tackle, top 10 right tackle. Roger Saffold's a huge free agent signing at left guard, you know, had a few, huge free agent signing at center with Ben Jones a few years back. And then you got Derrick Henry, who's a second round pick, but he's shown everybody that they were wrong with that pick and mm -hmm. he should have been in the first round to where that's where their money is and their money's performance. So this is going to be an unbelievable matchup. Chris Jones' health will be critical in this game. Yep. And I, I mean, I've been super impressed with Kansas City's run defense. Right. You know, I mean, you're right. They haven't played anybody like Tennessee. But, like, Denver runs it okay, yeah. and the Raiders run it really well, but they didn't have maybe Ryan Tannehill and A.J. Brown and Corey Davis and some of the scary guys that the Titans have a receiver. So it's going to be very interesting. It's really going to be, like, what defense responds from mm -hmm. the lackluster showing they showed in Week 10. Right. Maybe neither respond, and we just see an awesome well, game, it was, and it's like 44-41. I don't know. Well, final question for yeah. me to, to kind of put a butt on this yeah. one. It was an awesome game in Week 10. Yes. In Tennessee. Right. Run defense for Kansas City, as you pointed out, a lot better since then. Definitely. Tennessee's run offense, yeah. a lot better a since lot then. A lot better, too, right. When it comes to that part of the matchup, yeah. it's advantage who? I got to go with the Tennessee Titans right now. The, but, like, to me, the Chiefs can overcome it as long as it's not, like, 
Derrick Henry for 180 plus. Right. If if Derrick Henry runs for 120, like I think Kansas City be like, fine, we'll take it. Sold. That's good. That we're good with 100, 120. But once you start getting north of there, that means they're eating up yards, probably points, clock. Mahomes is not getting on the field a lot. Those are what I'd be worried about. So, you know, 120 or less, Kansas City's got a great chance. But if we start getting into 150, 180, dancing with 200 like we've seen, I would go, uh-oh, Kansas City's in trouble, or Patrick Mahomes, Watkins, and Hill better go off and just throw right. up a ton of, ton of big plays and points. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.